everybody. Keith Jamison, Gator Guy 231 across the DFS industry. And we have one of the biggest EPL slates in I don't know how long. Um, 150K prize pool, you know, while that is a normal occurrence and all the other sports, that is not something we see very often in soccer. So um, it should be fun. It does suck that DK decided that we had to top load that prize pool. But you know who won't be upset about 50K to first? The guy that, or girl that wins 50K. So I hope it's you. Um, before we jump in, we are doing a little giveaway um, today, kind of in honor of everything going on. Um, so make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel um, and that you retweet um, the tweet. I'll put it in the YouTube comments and find us um, FSI underscore DFS on Twitter. Um, retweet that once it's posted. We'll be uh, drawing a winner. I'm just shy of noon um, for a free $40 package. If you already are a subscriber, it'll just be credited to your account for future purchases. All right, with that, let's jump into the games. This should be a uh, a fun slate. And I do think that, you know, what I'll mention before you even go to the odds, I think that ultimately the quality of your build is going to decide. So, like, decide your moves and, like, how much you value floors versus wanting to give away for a ceiling. And that's especially important when we talk about Bruno Fernandez. Um, I do want to just keep mentioning for those that are new, um, we are, you know, really talking optimal slash cash building um, for GPP. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of go over at the, as we go, um, some stacks and things like that. But, you know, for this type of prize pool to win the GPP, it's really going to be about leveraging ownership grabbing a loan goal or just a low own construction with some stacks and correlation plays, that's going to let you win. Um, if you look at consistently who wins, you know, and um, somebody that's been on with me often, Parlor Boss has won a ton of GPPs and it's with stacks, it's with correlation plays, and it's really nabbing, you know, one loan, loan goal or one low own combination that consistently puts those type of people to the top. All right. So let's go over the cheat sheet and the odds. So we see Man U is the biggest favorite on the slate, minus 240. The second biggest um, favorite on the slate, and my favorite stack is Wolves. Um, let me just kind of just briefly go over that. So Sheffield has been really quite bad since um, coming back, but they're still a good team, still one of the better defenses in the EPBL. It does suck that Dean Henderson, you know, their star goalie, is actually a Man United loanee, so he's not going to be playing um, due to the, the contract issues with uh, not playing for his parent club. Um, but I still think that um, they, you know, can tactically shut down United. And, you know, one thing we've seen from United this year, and that was pre-Bruno, um, which I think changes a lot, but when a team does pack it in, they can struggle to get goals. So, um, I really do like Wolves at home a little bit more. Um, I think Bournemouth is just terrible, and it kind of feels in, in a lot of respects that they are almost to this point accepting relegation. Um, you know, we saw Ryan Frazier, one of the team's best players, just decide that he's um, he's going to be leaving the club, so he's not even going to play out the season. Um, Palace should be somebody that they're at least somewhat equivalent to, um, and Palace just pretty much wiped the floor clean with them. It didn't really ever look like Bournemouth was that willing to score. Um, Wolves is a team that, you know, when they're, when they're cooking, they, they can dominate um, a team and just, you know, make them look silly. Uh, so I do think that that's my favorite stack and maybe one of the pivots right away. And when we go over some Wolves pricing, um, we're going to see that there's not going to be a lot of those, those top guys that are going to be that highly owned. I don't think. Um, because of how, uh, you know, combinations and the salary structured. So that is an interesting stack. Um, then we go to uh, Newcastle, it's just a slight favorite at home to Villa, but that has the lowest total on the slate, two and a quarter. And then Everton is a slight favorite on the road to Norwich, who looked awful as well to Southampton. They came out gang busting out of the gates for, I think it was like 15, 20 minutes kind of settled in the game. And the moment that, you know, they kind of let the foot off the pedal, Southampton just pounced on them. So, um, and Everton, I do believe, is a better team than Southampton. So Everton minus 110 might actually be a little bit of lay of the line. That 2.5 total, too, I, I, I feel like uh, if you're a betting person, that might be something to look at the over. Um, you know, 
I, I don't really always trust Everton to take this clean sheet, even though they played defensively great versus my Liverpool team. But, uh, you know, they, they might get two or three goals themselves, Everton, that is. All right, so let's kind of go into projected lineups. So I'm going to also just be um, going over salaries and some constructions as we go. So for some reason, Sofa score, um, you know, who lets, you know, us me get this uh, upload here, did not have Norwich and Everton as of this morning. So, you know, here's something I found, um, you know, along the, the web that looks, looks, looks about right. So Aaron's and Lewis playing fullback, Buendia starting without Duda, um, and then Puki and Dermot. So here's what you need to look at at Norwich and the most important thing. Um, if Duda starts, so if Duda starts probably like over tri Tribal, um, sometimes they, or actually probably over Dermot and they just play Puki as a lone striker, uh, he would split with Buendia, which does hurt, you know, Buendia, who's at this point, I think, going to be one of the higher owned cash plays on the slate. He has an awesome floor. In this lineup, he'd have a monopoly of sets. Um, McLean has taken before, but that was without um, Duda or um, Buendia on the pitch. And just a guy that gets tackles, you know, a lot of shots assisted, some, some shots himself. Um, and he's, I think, 8,200. So he's going to fit a lot of builds. I do expect Buendia to be one of the better plays on this slate from a point per dollar perspective for a floor. Remember when we talk about floor, it's the, you know, those points that a player is going to accumulate without goals or assists that we can kind of depend on versus having to shoot at, uh, shoot at a goal, which obviously is a lot less likely of an outcome. Um, for GPP, Tribal or Puki, I'm not Tribal, Cantwell or Puki work. Um, but those fullbacks, I'll just tell you, they're, they're hard to fit on this slate. Um, I think you'll notice when you go through construction, um, you're going to lock in Dean on the other side. But outside of that, um, based on how the whole slate goes, it's really hard to pay up at fullback. And those those uh, Norwich guys don't really bomb forward or haven't in the past. Max Aaron has had a few games where he did, but I don't see that versus Everton. So I think for Norwich, it's uh, Buendia or Bust and then you know, best GBP play is Pookie, maybe with the side of Cantwell. Um, so the Everton side, I think this actually may it be in GPP one of the more popular stacks um, because it's Norwich, whose defense is bad, and because they're pricing. They're just really a little softly priced on the slate given the matchup and the upside that they possess. Um, so in this, Coleman and Dean would be the fullbacks. Dean is incredibly, incredibly offensive. We didn't see that versus Liverpool, but – we know in the past uh, he bombs forward um, when he gets out, when he rides that width on the left, um, almost everything he tosses in there is crossed to River Charleston or to uh, Calvert-Lewin. And then he also has a share of set pieces with Sigurdsson on. He takes one side of corners, Sigurdsson takes the other. Um, I think, I, I would argue that Richarlson is actually the most important player on the slate. Forward is really tough. Um, Rashford and Jimenez are, you know, great plays, but they're expensive, 9,500 and 10,500, 10,5 for Raul, which is, which is tough. But for Charleston, despite 10.1 deep floor points versus Liverpool, 9.4 floor points versus Chelsea, 8 DK floor points versus Man U, that's just the last three. He's still only 7,600. So those are the type of forwards that we expect to see from set takers, not from, you know, strikers slash goal scorers so on top of those floors he also has provided us 10 goals this year now he gets the soft Norwich um, defense so I actually do think that point per dollar he is the best forward play on the slate for optimal building I love Calvert-Lewin as a pivot off of him especially for GPP not for cash I think it's a little tough for cash but for GPP he's 7100 um, five goals in 10 games since the new year um, just somebody I could totally see showing up with a brace here um, and maybe going under-owned in that big 16. So 7,100 for Charles, not really like. In cash, the I think, I hope, I should say, I hope that more people decide to go to Sigurdsson over at Charleston. Sigurdsson, 6,900, does have the share of set pieces, which we know, you know, especially for guys like me. You take a corner, and then all of a sudden you're already on my radar. We're going to talk about a guy later that that, that happens. But and that's the case with a lot of players. Obviously, corner kicks, you know, do provide us some of the best floor in DFS. Um, and Sigurdsson does take them. 
Now, don't be kind of fooled by there's like a 17 cross log, there's a 16 cross log, and there. Um, when Ancelotti first took over, he let Sigerson just take a monopoly, even taking them over Dean. Um, since then, that has gone away. Uh, it's just soccer. So, like we saw this with West Ham yesterday. Sometimes these set piece situations, all we can do is go off of the pre previous data and what happened in previous games. And sometimes tactics change and uh, set takers change. So, could Sigerson show up and take a monopoly? Sure. Is it likely? Probably less likely than that. Um, I think Dean um, delivers a good ball in, um, and I do think that that's going to be a split. Also, Sigurdsson just, you know, it's he used to be this guy at Swansea City that, you know, I make the joke in uh, our Discord that there's a few gods of BFS, you know, Caustic's a god of BFS, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Kevin De Bruyne, Lionel Messi. Like, these guys that just, they walk on the pitch, it's double digits, and, you know, you're actually more surprised when they don't show up with 20. Um, Sigurdsson used to be that for Swansea, not so much for Everton. But 6,900 is really interesting. Awobi, so you're going to need a punt forward, I think, on a lot of builds. 4,300 for, uh, you know, attacking a wide player for Everton um, versus Norwich. You can do worse. So I do think that he'll be a popular too. All right, enough time on Norwich and Everton. That's probably the game I'm going to go the most detail into because these other ones are a little bit more two games one-sided and then one game that's just going to kind of get lost. So let's talk about Man U versus Sheffield. First off, let's just talk about Sheffield. I don't see you using any sort of builds here outside of two just pure punts. So there's a very good chance that these forwards is not how it lines up, that we might see um, like a Liz Mousset. Um, maybe we see – not Calum Robinson. He's not on loan. Um, McGoldrick um, in there. I don't have McGoldrick written down, but um, Mousset, I believe, is 3,700. Look, like Sheffield's not been scoring since we came back. Um, United has been awesome since the Bruno signing. So, you know, it's unlikely that he scores a goal. But we're, we're in punt range. Like, here's how the build's going to go. I, I guess I'm going to let the cat out of the bag. You're going to want to probably have three midfielders. So two midfielders and one in your utility. Um, Bruno Fernandez is by far and away the best floor in the slate, the best player in the slate. Hi potentially even the highest upside on the slate, but he is 11,300. You plug him in your lineup and you're already, as you start going through, you'll notice that you're kind of at a disadvantage. Um, meanwhile, just below him for almost 3,000 cheaper is a guy like Jack Relish, who has almost the same floor. Well, a couple couple points away on floor. You know, you'd say Bruno's probably in that 12 to 13 range and Drelish is in that nine to 11 range, but it does not support $3,000 different. Um, you have John Moutinho, who um, set Monopoly, four Wolves. Um, then you have Emmy Buendia, who I already mentioned, who I really like, who I think has close to a 9 to 10, to 10 DK floor. Moutinho probably in that like 8 to 10 range. I lower him a little bit. Matt Ritchie at 8,000, who can, for me is kind of the odd man out, but you know still has a set share. It's going to be at home. Does, you know, if the game flow goes right, does get super involved in crossing. Um, and then if we don't see John Joe Shelby, he would be on a monopoly. Um, so I think that there's a lot of players that want to play three of those guys. Um, and if you play Bruno, it's really hard to even get a second one in and still get like a guy like Richarlison or Calvert Lewin or just some sort of, or Sigurdsson or some sort of higher floor forward in your spot, along with Dean, who I didn't I'd say maybe right, but Dean is probably like one of the easiest plays on this slate at his price at 6,400. Put him in a midfield and he's in this 8,000 to $8,500 range. So with all that said, that's why I'm spending some time spending mentioning punt forwards here because I will think you will see in your build that you're probably going to want one. Um, if you don't need one, good for you. You found a different build than I've been on and, uh, you know, take my head to head, you probably will kick my ass. But anyhow, so look for Les Mousset. That potentially could help you. And if you get like 3 to 40K on him, that works. But, you know, Sheffield could still get United on the counter. If United, you know, is trying to push a game, get a goal, um, just opens themselves up to a counter. That's the type of thing where one of these strikers could show up with a goal and shoot. If you get a goal from like a 4,300 or sub 4K forward, you are going to be laps ahead of everybody else. Um, Norwood and Flex split the sets, but I don't think that you over-prioritize them here. Norwood is like right above 5K, so I guess it's okay. I just, uh, I think it's thin. 
um, given the slate and given the, the loaded midfield that I just kind of just talked about. Baldock and Shelby are the wingbacks. They are, do get fairly offensive when the game flow is right. This should not be a positive game flow for Shelfield. Um, thus, I probably will not be on them at their prices. All right, let's go over Man U where there's a lot more juice. So let's first just, uh, I already, I think I spent enough time on Bruno. He is bleeping awesome. He is just taking almost all their sets. So, you know, there was a time that he was splitting with Fred. You know, could Fred jump on some? Yes, but Bruno is going to be the majority taker. He also takes pr- penalty kicks. And we saw that for certain because Pogba was on last game when a PK was there. Pogba actually drew it. Bruno still stepped up, buried it in, would not expect any different. Um, but he has just been awesome in that role for United. No games are not double digits. Sheffield, you know, now has had two straight games. He's actually getting blitzed. Um, Aston Villa actually had so many chances versus them. Um, the first game back, and then the red card last game was really a little bit deceiving versus Newcastle. I thought Sheffield was kind of going to come into their own in the second half. Early red. Newcastle puts three on them. Um, they are definitely a team, you know, search for identity, and Bruno Fernandes is not the type of player they want to see. All that being said, so hard to fit. Um, he's going to be really, really popular in the GPP. He's going to be less popular in cash. I think cash, you'll know this is going to be where there's some sharper construction. But, you know, the casual player that doesn't play a lot of DFS is going to just probably lock Bruno and try to figure it out. So I do think there's a really solid pivot off of him to – more optimal construction. I think that I covered that. Marshall Rashford, GPP here. Rashford, obviously the better of the two plays just from upside and, you know, quality standpoint. Does make in GPP Martial much better leverage. Um, Luke Shaw is a terrible fullback. He just doesn't cross anymore. It's a shame. He used to cross a ton for Southampton, but those days are so gone. Um, Juan Bissau could be the better of the two, but he's, I think, like 6,300 or 6,200 or – so high fives is crazy. Like, it's so hard to fit. You would, outside of, like, you know, correlation. So this is when we're talking about correlation. So if you want to go United stack, that's the type of bill that you pick Juan Basaka and over Dean. Huge leverage because Dean's going to be triple his ownership. And then if Juan Basaka shows up with a, a cross goal to Martial, that's a very low own combination. And then you, you know, you correlate with a Bruno goal, a Rashford goal, and you're punting everywhere else, but you could sweat. Um, Paul Pogba, I just want to bring up, I think, is a, is a really nice GPP play. He is only 6,100. Really did look quite good um, versus Spurs and that uh, cameo off the bench. I think it was a big reason that United actually did get – obviously, he drew the, the, the penalty, but without him on the pitch, I don't know if United would have been able to break down Spurs and get a goal. Um, so I do think that that makes a lot of sense, especially because Fred and McTominay – can play a lot more of a defensive role, letting Pogba run more free and get involved offensively. You know, where Pogba's awesome is playing the number six role where he is defensive, but he doesn't want to be that player. He wants to get more involved. He wants goals. He wants to create. So this type of uh, lineup now would let him do so. Um, And then David De Gea, you know, Sheffield's been struggling to get goals. So David De Gea is fine to play for upside. It's just going to be hard to pay up a keeper. Okay, let's go to Newcastle Villa. This game is actually fairly important. So um, let's just start and go over actually Villa. Um, give me two seconds. Jack Realish, point per dollar, might be one of the best plays in the slate, um, especially if we don't see Connor Horahane. Um, that would really give Grealish potentially even more of a set role. Those two have been splitting. Now Trezeguet has taken before. John McGinn's taken before and Matt Target have taken before. So this, the Villa like set situations, chasing like a second set taker is tough. But Grealish, you know, without Horahane on, even with Horahane on, he's been splitting some. But I think that that kind of gives you at least a guaranteed split. And then we know with Jack Grealish, the floor is so much more than just the sets. Draws fouls at it, just probably the highest rate in the EPL. I I would have to look that up, but I, I would be shocked if anybody draws more fouls than him not afraid of taking a shot, um, sets up all the offense. So at 8,500 versus, you know, a fairly soft Newcastle team. Like, although, you know, I'm going to talk about in a minute how Dubrovka at home is always one of my favorite plays. It's not like we are ever going to be worried about Newcastle. This is not like a one-sided game. This game should be very, very evenly matched. 
Um, Newcastle does not want it to be free-floating. Villa does, so it'll be interesting who gets their way. But I do think that Jack Grealish, you know, I'd be, I'd be shocked if, he's, if he doesn't come up double digits. So he's probably going to be one of the first guys in my lineup. Um, Trezeguet, I think, is actually really interesting at 4,900. Um, if you want to go off of that three um, stud midfield build, he works. Anwar Ghazi um, is forward eligible, which and at 5,400 is really, really quite interesting. Um, he also used to take some sets. I don't know if he's going to anymore, um, but there's always that upside. But he is just a guy in open play that has no problem crossing, shooting, drawing fouls. Um, so he could easily get like six to eight DK without a goal. So 5,400, you like it. Matt Target could easily, like if we don't see Horahane, be that other set taker for them. Also likes to cross and open play, but I just think it's really hard to fit a second spin defender. But I do like the play. Kansa, we've seen it's just not a natural fullback. Um, he used to play in the back three for them and play last center back. So don't expect him, like when he's in, to bomb up a ton. But, you know, a cheap fullback. So I, I think that will be some people on him. John McGinn, this might be the game that he sits out. Um, He's still recovering from that long-term injury and has played two games now um, with a solid amount of minutes. But I didn't even write him down. I think he's like 5,100. Again, another guy on this Newcastle team that could take some sets. You know, these are the situations you want to avoid. But, you know, enough open play um, goodness that he's worth a look, but probably GPP. So Cash, to me, honestly, is probably only Grealish. But a lot of other guys, you know, that you got just some fun maybe stacking in here. Um, talk about a low owned stack if Villa went off. Um, that could definitely win you GPP. I won't have it, but just want to point that out. All right, Newcastle, another low owned GPP stack that if it goes off, they just won um, GPPs on Sunday with that uh, with the red card. So they could very easily, you know, something like that happen, or Villa's defense gets leaky, which we've seen it many times. They they, they could show up and and win a GPP. The top cash play is Matt Ritchie, eight K. Uh, feels steep to me. But I see a lot of builds that you land on him as that third four as that, as that third midfielder. Um, so I can support it. He does have a good floor for a close to double digits. And then we saw a ceiling game last time. So he may becomes actually an even easier play if we don't see John Joe Shelby. He probably would move to close to set monopoly as long as you don't see Lazaro in, which I don't think he will. But Lazaro has taken before. But other than that, you know, Richie might take a monopoly. In that situation, it's a little bit easier to uh, to swallow that pill with him. Um, I think he very well may be the only cash play. I know there's a contingent that always play Miguel Almiron. 6,400 because he's forward eligible. It, it feels steep to me on this slate. You know, much rather pay 1,200 to go to get Richarlson. I'd much rather pay 700 more to go get Calvert-Lewin. Um, and then, you know, 500 to Siggy. God, it sucks having so much Everton, like, not love. I can't love. I'm a Liverpool fan, but but intrigue. Everton intrigue is tough for me to do, but those were Joe Ellington, 6,000. That's a GPP play only. Um, Alan St. Maximin, ultimate GPP play. Love this guy. So active. Like He's actually just awesome to watch how he takes on and runs at people, but I think he's like 7K at midfield. He won't be any owned, so you know, GPP play right there. And these fullbacks don't really cross. Rose, Mankia, um, if you just want to bring up Dubrovka, um, obviously I don't want to overweigh home field with um, no fans in the crowd, but Dubrovka has just been a guy at St. James Park. Just He just erupts. And now what I think is really even more interesting is Villa has lacked finishing quality all season, but has no problem. Like El Ghazi, Grealish, McGinn, Trezeguet, they have no problem shooting. Um, I, you know, I haven't even talked about Samada because I don't think he's scored since he's came over. Maybe he has one, but... Um, you know, he's a GPP play, but you have plenty of guys over here that don't mind shooting. Um, you know, and that gives Dubrovka upside and even some floor. So I do like that for goalie. Final game, uh, Wolverhampton versus Bournemouth. So I already mentioned that Wolverhampton, I really think is quite a good stack here for GPP. So Raul Jimenez is the second most, second highest price player on the slate. Um, he's not going to be owning cash at all at 10-5. Maybe he's a little bit owned, over-owned in GPP because of that, but I really don't see builds that you can play Bruno and Raul. And I think in GPP, Bruno probably becomes the most owned player. 
at least in like the not sharp population. So that immediately, I think, gives uh, Raul big leverage if he can show up with like a goal and assist game or a two goal game. And Bournemouth definitely can give it up. Um, Jota, I, I love for GPP as well. 7,900. He is almost always going to sub, but he's a guy that we've seen multiple times this year break slates um, with two and three goal games. I want to say he had a four goal game last year in the EPL. Um, so for under 8K to get that type of upside and, you know, a gorgeous matchup. Um, yeah, I, I can really get on board there. Triore is a little bit expensive. Um, he doesn't shoot nearly as much as the other two, 9,200, but he's the guy that kind of provides the floor. He and Moutinho are the floor guys. It's interesting on a, a Wolves stack, you, you could potentially talk about not needing those floors um, and just shooting for the ceiling. So going like Raul and Jota, you probably want to play Moutinho in case you, uh, you know, you get a set piece goal. But, you know, doing these wingbacks, Doherty and Johnny, who aren't going to be great for cash. Neither one are like huge floors, although Johnny has three straight games of double digits. Um, Doherty is the guy that always, you know, shows up with goals more often than not. And a lot of times they're on like back post headers. So, um, you know, doing like a correlation of Jota, Jimenez, Moutinho, Doherty, um, and the goalie, Rui Patricio, because Bournemouth's just struggling to do anything. Yeah, I like that. But uh, John Moutinho, let's just spend a minute on that. So in this type of formation, he takes all the set pieces. Um, you still might see Ruben Neves take a free kick because Ruben Neves is an awesome free kick taker. But John Moutinho would have all the corners and all of the free kicks where there's going to be a cross in. Um, if for some reason the game flow goes and Wolves are just – it's the 60th minute and it's still 0-0, zero to zero, you're going to start seeing Traore attack the byline a ton trying to cross balls in. And when that happens, you get a lot of blocks and deflections out that cost, that cost corner kicks. Um, you know, you could see John Matina show up with 12, 13 crosses. Um, and that's where, you know, that type of floor at 8,300 would be really interesting. So he is part of that top, you know, midfield floor um, contingent. And, you know, with it being so hard to fit Wolves in any optimal builds, I do think we'll see him fairly high owned in cash as I need Wolves exposure, which – you know, I've talked about before, I, I hate that idea that I have to take this guy because I want exposure. But, you know, John Moutinho still um, is a set monopoly taker for the second biggest favorite in the slate versus a terrible defense. So I, I think it makes plenty of sense and is a play that I will be debating on towards lock. I will tell you it's somebody that I am very much um, interested in. Um, born aside, let's just talk about a couple plays here. So David Brooks took almost every set. Uh, I don't know how much you want like overweigh sets here versus Wolves in a game that Wolves, you know, kind of should dominate possessionally, but he is 4,800 um, for a Monopoly set taker. Um, that is, let me just try to check. Yeah, 4,800 um, is something to value. Now, if you see Junior Stanislaus in here, either over Harry Wilson or um, Don Juma, um, Stanislaus, in my opinion, would jump on the sets. He always subs, but he is only 3,300. And that is the build with that type of player that gets you off of three 8K type midfielders and also would open up Bruno. So watch Junior. If you are saying, Keith, I really, 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 really want Bruno, look for Junior Stanislaus. That's like your key to getting it done. Um, I made a joke earlier that uh, if a guy takes a corner, I'm immediately interested in, in, in him. And Arnott Danjuma took a corner last week. He is forward eligible, 4,100, was their big signing in the offseason, 20 million. Um, God, I can't remember what Belgian team he was from. But anyhow, played in the Champions League last year. Unfortunately, I got to watch him, which means that I kind of like him because you can tell he's a skilled player. So it's like sometimes these eye tests fool you. Um, then they come to the EPL and, you know, the physicality is just too much for them. But 4,100 potential, maybe he jumps on a corner or two, but, you know, does have some wide value. 41, I, I can do worse. So he's one of the guys I definitely have my eye on in the punt range for forward. I'd much rather play him over like paying up for Callum Wilson and just praying for a goal. Um, Adam Smith's going to be over-owned today. So he is your classic fullback that doesn't really play like a fullback, um, especially if he plays on the left. He's a right-footed. He's always played right back. Like we three, four years have been playing fantasy soccer. I've only ever seen him at right back until the last couple months. 
and he has just done very little on the left, but he is 3,100 for a fullback that is alive, okay? People like fullbacks that are living, so he's going to be owned in cash. Just know that. I, I think I'd rather play a center back at this point, especially if it's upside. Oh, I do want to bring one more one other point. If you hear this anywhere, I want I command everybody to laugh. If anybody says that Connor Cody is a set piece threat, please mock the person. I'm he's gonna score a goal now. Okay. I know how this works. He's gonna score a goal. He has no shots this year. He has started almost every game. He has 28 starts if I remember right. No shots. That is so hard to do. Um I'm not gonna pretend to be like the Wolves truthler. I have I don't watch a Wolves game and like try to look for Connor Cody. Where's Connor Cody? I'm assuming he's never been in the box. No shots, guys. So uh, just because of this rant, I'm so excited for his one goal. But anyhow, um, yeah, there's Connor Cody for you. But 2800, at least you know if you wanted to use Rui to correlate for a uh, uh, clean sheet upside, maybe he has a long pass over the top that gets an assist. You never know. Um, so anyhow, I'm bored up. But Harry Wilson took one corner. Um, everybody thought he would jump on sets, including me. Um, one corner, so he's a little overpriced. I don't even written down, but I think he's just too too expensive on the slate. Uh, yeah, and Jack Stacy is just way too expensive. He's the more attacking of these two fullbacks. Um, do look if you see Diego Rico, 4400. That would be a really interesting play. He does always take some sets when he's on. Um, so if he started, or if they played wing backs or something like that, 4400, that'd be really interesting. But again, it's hard to get to that build. Um, but you know, and this is the guy. I guess what I'll just leave on. Um, we are in the third. Some of these teams are playing their third. Some of these teams are playing their second EPL game. But these games are coming like every three to four games. So you are going to see a ton of roster rotation. So this was a preview. This is just meant on some projected lineups that I've seen. I hope I've covered a lot of bases and even covered some pivots based on lineups. But you have to look at lineups. You have to be ready and be on your phones at noon when lineups come out and understand all the pivots. Um, there's a ton of great content out there, content providers, chat rooms, all this stuff that I'm sure you'll be able to find it in. Um, if you want, you know, somebody to really help, you like how I talk, you like, you know, just this consistent content, that's what we do at FSI, really helps our members, um, you know, get an advantage over the field is we preview it, we talk about it beforehand, and then once lineups come out, you know, what this means now. So please make sure that you're paying attention to that um, and understanding all those picks and pivots. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to, tw uh, to do the retweet contest. Would love to uh, give away... Um, this $40 prize. Um, and once again, Keith Jamison, uh, Gator Guy 231 Really appreciate you all watching. Hope you have a great day. And somebody take down the GPP. That is not uh, that is not one of these top DFS pros that was in the show from the lottery. Take care, guys. Have a great day.